crisis on the southern border. Yesterday, our own Jackie Heinrich had this impromptu exchange with Biden in the White House, where he admitted that the border is not secure, in contrast to what his own DHS secretary says. Yeah, he said that the border is secure, sir. No, it's not. I haven't been there for the last 10 years. I've said it for the last 10 years. Do you believe your Give me the money. Do you believe your policies have enabled any of this crisis in the border that you're no, with I, now? I've asked for thousands more of everything from judges to Kayla fought for her life that day with all that she had. And in the end, she lost to an individual that wasn't even supposed to be allowed in the country. This is a safety issue for everyone living in the United States. This could have been anyone's daughter. If we had stricter border policies, my daughter would still be alive today. Emotional testimony on Capitol Hill this week as a mother blames government agencies for the rape and murder of her daughter by an alleged MS-13 gang member in the country illegally. Joining us now is Kayla Hamilton's mother, Tammy Nobles, along with criminal defense attorney Brian Claypool. Tammy, Brian, thank you for being here. And Tammy, as you may recall, our viewers don't know, but I was a reporter that day in the hearing before Chairman Mark Green is committee, the Homeland Security Committee. And it was really, I, I was so struck and moved by your willingness to come before these lawmakers and before the entire nation to lay bare immeasurable grief that you have gone through in a case that could have been prevented had the immigration officials simply made a phone call on the murder of your daughter to find out that this El Salvadoran man was uh, a known member of a gang. Yes, he is actually a minor. Supposedly he is a minor. Um, we don't know his real age. And Timmy, I, I want to ask you, the, the, the committee was, so the Democrats were, were not really quite as helpful, I think, as the Republicans in trying to get to a practical standpoint, to ask someone with such a terrible experience what it is that needs to be done, what you would like to see done. Is it, do you want to see Secretary Mayorkas impeached? I, yes, because he is not making sure that they are that um, the Homeland Security is doing their job. They failed Kayla. They did not do their job. They didn't do the, um, the, the, the one phone call. They did not check his body and they just allowed him into this country without even doing any kind of checks. And he was on. The, he was listed as an MS-13 gang member in El Salvador. And Chairman Mark Green was quite upset that Marcus was not there to hear firsthand your testimony. Here's a little bit of what he told us in the hallway. Watch here. He, he has disregarded the laws passed by Congress, disregarded court orders, and he can't come over here and explain himself while that mother is in there sharing the story of how her child died at the hands of someone who was released at our southern border. Brian, I want to turn to you because in the wake of this hearing and, and the chairman so upset, you have launched with Timmy, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the first ever wrongful death lawsuit against DHS specifically for this type of situation. Hey, Griff, great to be with you. You're absolutely right. We are fed up. I'm a single father of a teenage daughter, a little bit younger than Kayla, who was, who was raped and murdered. So I'm a parent involved in this too. And we are tired of being held hostage in our own country. Griff, DHS is the gatekeeper of that border. They owe a duty to protect citizens in this country. And when they catastrophically fail to do the most rudimentary measures, for example, lift up the shirt of this kid, what do they see? A gang-related tattoo. What does that mean? You're going back to El Salvador. Secondly, pick up the phone. Make a phone call to the consulate. Guess what? His name's on the list because 
He was arrested in, in July 2020 for being involved in an illicit gang, MS-13 gang in El Salvador. Had the Border Patrol done their job, he's gone and Kayla lives to get married and Kayla lives to have a child. That's why we're filing this lawsuit. And tragically, Kayla did not live. And Timmy, at the risk of, of, of having you explain to viewers that may not know this story, I was horrified as a father of two daughters to learn that Kayla actually called for help, called her boyfriend. Can you describe for our viewers sort of what happened in that moment? As soon as this murderer broke into her room, she was asleep. She always kept her bedroom door locked. He broke into her room and of course she was startled. She grabbed her phone and right when she grabbed her phone, this MS-13 gang member grabs one of her phone cords and wraps it, tries to get her, tries to wrap it around her neck, but misses. Um, and gets it around her face, she's calling, it went to voicemail, and somehow the phone was on the ground during the struggle, and he actually gets it around her neck and is choking her, and they are struggling. Um, I have not heard this voicemail, and I don't know if I ever can because I don't want to hear my daughter struggling to breathe and struggling to live. Mm. And after he strangles her and he kills her, he rapes her. And then he just leaves her on the floor like trash and then just go. Mm. Murder. I don't know how any parent could bring themselves to listen to a voicemail as heart-wrenching as that. Tammy Nobles, thank you for, for coming on here with us. And Brian, I just want to give you one last word, and that is where, where do you go from here? What's the next steps in this lawsuit against DHS? Yeah, yeah, Griff, one other point I want to make is not just DHS. It's health and, uh, health and human services as well. They are equally culpable because when this individual was allowed to cross the border, he's put in a holding facility. DHHS, Griff, is required to then make a phone call and find what's called a verified sponsor for this kid to go to, a relative, not another Ill illegal immigrant. And they catastrophically failed Kayla in this country. They let him go with somebody who's not a relative. He runs away from that home a month later, and then he ends up renting a room with Kayla from another illegal immigrant. And then after he murders and rapes Kayla, he ends up, Griff, placed in a group foster home by our pathetic DHHS, where he could have murdered somebody else. So that's why we're filing this lawsuit. We're gonna get answers, and, and our federal government has blood on its hands. And unless we take a stand now, hold them accountable, get answers, then this is gonna to continue to happen. Last 10 seconds, Tammy. You hold Secretary Mayorkas responsible for the murder of your daughter? Yes, because if they would have done their job or he would have made sure they did their job, my daughter would still be alive today, mm. living her life and being able to experience the rest yep. of what adults are experiencing and getting married, having a baby. In such a bright future. Tammy Nobles, Brian Claypool, thank you for coming on. Please keep us posted on any developments in this case. And our thoughts and prayers are with you, Tammy, and your family. Thank you. Thank you, Griff.